Gala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Five minutes after 10 o'clock, I need a new business card, Robin. Okay. I found out that I am eligible for a new title. Oh, yes. all right. And I, and I think if you have a title, you should put it on your business card. Uh-huh. So, in addition to broadcaster, it should say coit, uh, polycoidal. <laughs> I am a polycoidal man. I like that. Okay. I don't know if I should be proud of that or not. Uh-huh. Some people might not like that, but I'm sorry. It's just a fact. Well, you have to tell me what that means. It means I've had more than one sex partner in my life. Oh, okay. I learned All this right. word three hours ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you never knew you had that kind of title. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. I learned it from the Kleiss Press Sectionary, um, and we're going to talk about this right now. It sounds fun. Uh, Sarah Rogers is on the phone. Sarah is passionate about... Sex positivity and sexual education. Yep. And she's, um, I, what do you say, editor? An editor. An editor. Yeah. The, editor when you put together book. a dictionary, I guess you're an editor. Yes. Uh, Sarah Rogers. Good morning, Sarah. How are you? Morning, Larry and Robin. Look very well. How are you? Good. I'm polycoidal. Thank you very much. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if my Catholic friends would like this, but I am. I'm sorry. It's hap- it happened to work out that way for me. Uh, <laughs> where are you? Where are you calling from? Oh, uh, well, Cleus Press. We're based in Jersey City, uh, so right next to New York. Thank you for correcting my pronunciation, Cleus Press. Okay. <laughs> no worries. It's it's a confusing word if you haven't encountered it before. So I have one. I have a little story to tell you, um, and, but I don't think I want to define on the air what the word means. You'll have to look it up yourself. I mean, I know you know, Sarah. <laughs> but uh, years ago, I, I was I was um, I earned a living by playing guitar in lounges, and when you do that, you you work basically from nine p.m. till 2 a.m. and then you have the rest of the day off and and so i was in saint augustine florida of all places and basically had a lot of time to kill now i i didn't do the 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 killing time with masturbation thing i didn't do that there's, there's a word for that too there's a, there's a word one of my favorite definitions and what is that word what is, what is that word what by the way Procrat- procrastinating <laughs> there you go that works for me and you didn't make that up that's really a word huh? that is a legitimate word and i'm sure it's a favorite among college students <laughs> oh that's funny so anyway so i i went to the mall the local mall at that time and um they had a game room when game rooms i don't even know if they're still around because i was considerably younger myself um but anyway they had a, a like a trivia game and you could pick the sex category so i did and I learned from that what a pearl necklace is. Just so you oh. know. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. <laughs> See that? She's happy. I had no idea there was even a word for that. And and everybody else, I'm not telling you what it is. I promise you. <laughs> well, they're going to have to buy the dictionary and find out themselves. Yeah, you will have to buy the dictionary. <laughs> it is in the dictionary. So, I, I you know, uh, okay. And one more quick little story. When I was much, much, much younger, I'm talking elementary school. I, I grew up on Long Island in New York. And... Um, my friend must have written the F word on the curb with chalk. And, <laughs> and he said to me, can you, can you pronounce that? And of course, it's an easy one to sound out. Yeah. <laughs> so very proudly. And I said it. And then he laughed because I said it. And I said, what? What did I say? What is that? <laughs> so it, it is funny how these words make their way into our vocabularies. Yeah, it's really interesting, and what I find even more in- interesting is how there are so many things that, you know, have an actual word assigned to them. It's just we don't necessarily know it. Um, it so, And there's a lot of those in the sectionary. You know, putting this together, I was, like, regularly astounded by, wow, there's actually a word for, you know, when you have to have sexual relations and imagine someone else while doing it in order to achieve orgasm. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> so is, is, is there a word to indicate that you don't let on about that? I mean, if, you do, if you're doing, what, what is that word again? Uh, well, the word is allorgasmia. Okay. And it's just, a, it's a sexual condition, actually, where people need to imagine someone else uh, during coitus. 
aside from the partner they're engaging with. Doing coitus. Oh, okay. Does anybody use the word coitus actually like when they're in the mood? Like, hey, you in the mood for some coitus? Oh, a- only Sheldon Cooper, you know. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it almost sounds like tennis. Like It almost sounds like it's a sport. Yeah, well, want, it is. Want to do <laughs> I think it's more action than verbal, though, isn't it? There you go. I mean, no one's verbal. really keeping score. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Do, do the it's words, if, just a, a word question more than anything here. Uh, do the words become, oh, how do you even ask this? Do, do words that are like urban slang, do they be, do real words start out as urban slang? Maybe in, in this world, in the, in the sex world. Is, is Oh, in the sex world and the world in general, um, you know, regularly there's new words being added to the definitive dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary every day. And, um, you know, a lot of things, you know, do start out as slang, especially in this dictionary. Um, you know, like pearl necklace, like you mentioned earlier, or, you know, shooting blanks. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, they all start out as, you know, metaphors and, you know, they turn into legitimate definitions that are part of, you know, everyone's kind of common speech or maybe not everyone's, but the common speech all in right. regard to sex. So, the, the, okay, here's a, here's a word. Uh, it's here, here's, I don't know if you know these all by memory, but hirsutophilia. Hirsutophilia. Am I saying that right? Hirsutophilia. It, it, it says a fetish for the sight or feeling of hair. Okay. Okay. So now, so here, here's, I have a point to make about this. Here's Shutophilia. If I was an, <laughs> if I was an attorney mm-hmm. and, and somebody accused me of being inappropriate and, and I said, no, no, she only touched me with her hair. Mm-hmm. And then her attorney might say, yes, your honor, but he suffers from here's Shutophilia. <laughs> There you go. So if I didn't, if I didn't, that wouldn't turn me on, and it wouldn't be sexually inappropriate if if it was just a hair thing, right? Like we went we went to the Thanksgiving parade last Thursday, and and there were a lot of people rubbing their hair on me. I, I was yeah, I was <laughs> crowded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that could have been you know um, you know a day in paradise for perhaps some people. Um, That's right. <laughs> well, I think. In in regard to take things maybe like a little more seriously for a second, that would probably require like here ustophilia is a fetish, and a fetish is something that's a little bit more serious than say a kink, for example. So uh, do people get um, therapy for fetishes and not kinks? Oh uh, well, I mean therapy for fetishes, perhaps only if they cause harm to someone else. Right. Um, like in the back of the dictionary, we have a list of non-consensual terms. So basically, anything found in that section, um, <laughs> okay. I'd imagine people would be, you know, especially, you know, if anything legal were to happen, um, you know, they would probably have to seek out therapy, but. Uh, a kink is something that someone enjoys sexually but doesn't need it in all their sexual encounters. A fetish is a little bit more serious where a person can't achieve orgasm without that oh, included okay, in their okay. sexual repertoire. Uh, so, basically, so, basically, so from the example you set, yes, someone could say my client is sexually aroused by being touched by human hair. Right. So this was sexual in nature. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the the oh defense would have you know some well the prosecutor would have a leg to stand on for that one. <laughs> and uh, 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 speaking of nature, you do have dendrophila. Yes. <laughs> Which okay. blew my mind when I first heard of this one. Um, can you take a guess for what it is? Me? Okay, I don't know what this one. It's a fetish for. <laughs> D- is it something to do with teeth? Dendro. Yeah, that's what I thought. Dendro. Dendro. I no, I don't know. Is it philia? Philia means fear. No, philia means what? Phila. Oh, no philia. Okay, never. Mind. I, I'm I'm lost. I don't know. They're very close. Uh, well, it's a fetish uh, for trees, <laughs> <laughs> where people are aroused oh, by trees. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> And I mean, you know, everyone has their own set of, you know, things that get them where they need to get. But, uh, you know, I, I personally find it very, I'm, I'm you not, know. Yeah, I'm not traveling with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> or camping with him, right? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. No, we're not going well, camping. The wind whispering through the trees on a hot summer's day, you know. Oh, wow. That's a crazy one. I can one. imagine it. 
<laughs> no, you can't. And Christmas trees are so pretty. Shiny balls and lights. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh no. Multiple <laughs> angles that this could be approached. How does that happen? <laughs> what is? I mean, is there a psychologist that has figured out how that happens? That somebody could be attracted to a plant? <laughs> Well, I'm sure, like, there's there's several call-outs in the book itself that um, go into deeper detail about some things that are looked into and studied more deeply. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone is, you know, investigating that on some level. All right. Um, there's, there's, there's one fetish that uh, Hugh Hefner counted on, and, and I think it indicates that pretty much all men have this fetish. It is gymnophilia. It is, gymnophilia. Yes, it's a fetish for nudity, according to your book. Gym, like in gymnasium? Yes. <laughs> Gym, gym, gymnophilia. Isn't that the word gymnasium, by the way? Doesn't it come yes. from the Greek something with the, the nudity? Aren't all gymnasiums like basically nuditoriums? N- exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nuditorium. Way of life. <laughs> <laughs> I just made up a word. Yeah, there you go. Nudit- we'll have to include that in the next edition. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Notatorium by Larry. W- but your but your <laughs> definition of a fetish, in and in, in this says a fetish for nudity. Wouldn't that be all men? Mm-hmm. Basically, aren't we all that way? Well, how about women? Well, I think you it, it's pro- <laughs> You don't buy nude magazines, do you? No, no, but we do. But women like being nude. It's true. Oh, okay, um, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. But it probably <laughs> takes it maybe to, like, another step where, you know, maybe being nude in, like, inappropriate places. Oh. Uh, you know, there's there's different, you know, <laughs> areas of nudity, you know, of, you know, arousal. Like you San know. Francisco, does that count? Is that- <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy fest. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, one of the things that you do in the sectionary that aren't in... Uh, the sectionary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that aren't in regular dictionaries is that sometimes you have a word and then you have like one line, but then other words you have short essays that are pretty yeah. fun to read. Just yeah, because uh, we had wanted to... Um, you know, explore certain words a little bit more deeply than others because they may warrant a little bit more explanation. Uh, for example, there is one term, uh, hypersexuality. Uh, so that is defined as a sexual condition that causes one to experience much more sexual desire than the average person. So um, people who define themselves as sex addicts uh, would fall into that category. And just because... Um, like for this one instance, there was more of a history behind it, so it actually ties into like Greek myths about nymphs and satyrs, and uh, so it was just like a fun little aside to something that was more serious. Um, and we also try to keep it very educational, but you know we try to enliven certain parts of it oh, as yeah. well with interesting little factoids, you well, know, uh, things that potentially could win you, you know, the Jeopardy. Uh, daily double. Can you imagine? Can you imagine these in jeopardy? All right. Well, well, I, I just want to tell you uh, that that you have actually made me feel good about turning down an invitation to a sausage party. I had no idea. Oh, it, well, now you know. Yeah, I thank God I said no to that one. I have to look this yeah, up. Yeah, I'm, I'm not interested in the sausage party. Thank you very much. Uh, to have uh, this book all encompassing with all of the words and the meanings, you. And your team had to do a lot of research on this. Yes, we did. Uh, we worked in-house on staff, and we actually brought in uh, two additional editors to help research and compile all of the terms. And, um, you know, at the, every, at the end of every book, you know, you always feel like there's more that you can do. And obviously with this one, there's tons of new terms being uh, created every day. And... Um, you know, it was just a really extensive research project, and we went through painstakingly and rewrote the definitions and tried to put our own spin and tone into them where it's educational and fun. Were there some terms you couldn't believe it when you read them? And all, figured out? There's some in here. I've, I've found, I just found Angry Dragon. I never heard of this before. Oh, can we talk yeah, about that that's on that's the air? No, you can't talk about there? the Angry Dragon oh, on the air. Okay. No, no. All right. Well, i got to look it up then. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little uh, risky. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Angry Dragon. So, yes. so Robin's question is, I mean, did you find some? I mean, I'm guessing most of these were not familiar to you. Am I right? Well, being that Cleus Press is a publisher of, you know, erotica and other um, sexual education books, 
uh, in general that are of a more serious nonfiction nature. A lot of these we actually have encountered before. Um, so while we may not be experts on all fetishes, um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing to say that I wasn't surprised by most of these. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, do you supply sex education materials to the high schools for their classes? Well, um, there is, we have a few books lined up in the works that may be uh, geared toward that audience, uh, but it tends to be more so geared toward adults. Um, for instance, two books we recently published were The Transgender Teen and Transgender Child, mm -hmm. and it's, they're both handbooks oh, for parents and professionals and families about supporting transgender and non-binary kids and teens, you know, as they are exploring, like, their genders and their sexualities, and the best course of action for moving forward because uh, some pretty world. complicated stuff. The world has changed so much. <laughs> you, know, you know, when I was a kid, you would you would ask the joke, you would do the joke at the at the store. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Oh, yes, we do. Oh, <laughs> if you see what the definition of the Prince Albert is in this book, oh my gosh, it's a little bit different. <laughs> it's a lot different. It's and, and, if, and if you do, if you carry on the joke, do you have Prince Albert in a can? Well, I did last night. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, your, your dictionary, your, your uh, <laughs> sectionary seems like it would be very beneficial to people that might need to have therapy, not for the part of being overly active, but for those that maybe the spark has gone out of their relationship and this could be a game changer for them. Exactly. That was one of um, the uh, target audiences we had in mind when we wrote this was either couples married or not, you know, who may be interested in exploring their sexuality a little bit more and finding maybe what's missing in the bedroom. And, you know, as we've been joking about, you know, not everything is for everyone. Uh, but, you know, picking through this, you know, you may stumble ac across a secret fetish uh, with your significant other you never knew you had. And uh, <laughs> the sparks are instantaneously back. You know, what's, you know what's not in the book? I just looked it up. It's another thing I learned at that uh, game room. Oh. The Japanese How swing. Oh. Ja <laughs> the Japanese swing. Have, have you heard of the Japanese swing? I don't think so. Is oh that a, a position? No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's something that hangs from the ceiling and, and uh, spins. Oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> it's uh, uh, bottomless. There's a you know, it's it's bottomless. Probably. So you push the envelope, you don't go across the line. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I was just trying to, you know, be right. helpful here. Well, a discreet visual. I have the, I have the <laughs> the, co the um, cover of the book on the podcast that we're doing right now, so those watching it are able to see the cover. Um, I, you know, I like the idea that the girl on the cover is reading the book. That's kind of cool too. Yeah. It's a bookception. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, with you being a female and then uh, the uh, gen gentleman that was your co-editor on that, did you guys have an open relationship while you were compiling this book? <laughs> I would say no. <laughs> no, but I, you but know, I mean, were, 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 were you easy to talk to each other between the female oh. and, and male gender about everything that's that's going on in here? Yeah, very much so. Um, I mean, Cleus Press, in, in general, is a very uh, sex-positive publisher. And, um, you know, it's kind of part of the M.O. I mean, working here, uh, you know, it's not forced upon anyone. No one's made to feel uncomfortable. But, you know, a certain level of sex positivity and openness is, you know, expected and also appreciated. So um, it, w it was a fun and educational experience working together. You know, it would, would be interesting, and maybe you've done this too, um, some of the people from history, I mean, Cleopatra or... or I don't know, I'm just picked her at random, or, or anybody, uh, you know, what what kind of things in this book actually apply to them that we know about anyway? You'd have to know about it in order to write about it. But but in order to write about it, you'd have to have the right word. I guess that's the important message, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, well, if you, what do you call it when you write um, erotic fiction? Is it called blue prose or purple prose? What purple prose, purple I think. Prose? Yeah, I mm -hmm. think it's I think so. Prose. So if you're a purple prose writer, um, you might want to get a copy of the mm -hmm. sectionary. I have a copy of it right here. Mm -hmm. If I have somebody out there who would like it, I promise you, we, we will hand it to you in a brown paper bag. <laughs> and, it's, <laughs> this, and, and this is very well, fun. The cover is very NSFW, so... Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, it is safe, and, you know, poets need their rhyming dictionary, so erotica authors need their dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> but this go. is a, a very fun book, and uh, I, I really think that it could open up conversations between people that are having a little bit of relationship difficulties. Yeah, no, very much so. Um, you know, it could be a, a tool used at home or, you know, maybe, you know, with a therapist if someone's going to see, like, a count- marriage counselor or anything like that. Uh, but on the more fun side of things, you know, it could be used in, you know, a much more casual exploratory setting. So, I think it's wonderful. So the, I have an idea for a game. The, the book is, um, let's see, the book is <laughs> 237 pages long. So I have, a, I have an idea for a game. It's called Pass or Go. Okay. Uh huh. Right. Right. You 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 pick a number, and then you have to open up to that page number, and then the first thing you see, you either pass or go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like a new swing on like uh, the die. Yeah. Right. I have, That's right. Exactly. I have, I have no or idea. Spin the bottle. It, you it, know, you it never might can it might uh, it might be exciting for somebody. All right. I do have a copy of the book. It's called uh, the Sectionary, the Cleus. Press sectionary. Um, it is an adult book, so you, you would be careful of that. Uh, so come and pick it up if you want it. The rest of us will have to go buy it. It's really affordable. I found it on Amazon for like six or oh oh uh, sixteen dollars. Uh, Kindle version is nine dollars. So um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. This is mm-hmm. a fun book. If you're on the subway, nobody will see you reading it on a Kindle. No, it's not. It's not thirty well, dollars. No, it's not. It's fun. I'm just being silly. I All right. Uh, great. I think <laughs> therapists love it too. Sarah, I hope you're having fun talking to radio hosts about this. I, I I'm just trying to imagine what you're going through this morning talking to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is this is your average day for me. So, oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, so, let's see. I guess is there a website you want to give us besides uh, Amazon? Uh, yes. Well, to purchase the book, it's available everywhere at all major retailers, uh, both print and digital editions. So, you know, pick your favorite poison, and you should be able to find it um, <laughs> wherever you like best. All right. Very nice. Good, very good. Uh, Sarah, have a great uh, holiday season, whatever you celebrate, and, and, and just have fun and celebrate it. And <laughs> it looks like you got a lot of opportunities uh, wherever you are. Where are you? Are you in the city? Indian. Are you in New York City? We're in Jersey City, so Jer- we're right across. Oh, right way. across. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Have fun in Jersey. Oh, uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> With our sectionaries in hand. Thank, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> All right. We'll be All right. right. Thanks, Larry and Robin. I want a private pilot's license for Christmas. Only the private pilot's license will do. Don't want anything else. No dinky tinker talk. 